Welcome. Are you part of a company looking to improve your brand's visual presence? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to GS Podcast, where brands go big. With me, your host, Paul Miller. Welcome back to the seventh uh, podcast for Graphic Systems, Print Innovation Fulfilled. Uh, I hope everybody had a great summer. We took the summer off of of podcasting, not of not of business, um, and um, and and we hope that everything was awesome and that everybody enjoyed all the beautiful sunshine. It's still continuing on right now. Um, you know, we have where we last left off um, in late spring. We were talking about this emerging trend of texturized print. That's what we had kind of put our, our, our stake in the ground and said, hey, this is something that we're going to become experts at. We had started in the fine art um, world and transitioned that into retail marketing. And certainly the last four or five months uh, or four months, I guess, since we last talking, have been you know, pretty awesome in the continued learning process and development of this, um, this great technique of bringing in the sense of touch to the otherwise traditionally visual environment. Um, there's going to be some footage that kind of carries along with this um, off the YouTube um, uh, post that shows one particular project that I'll, I think I'd like to get into today, where it, we started out working on what eventually essentially was a pillowcase for a window display. Um, so printed on canvas and made into this texturized tactile type of feeling pillowcase for a home collection. And from there, uh, the success of it was, was pretty, pretty rampant. And so we went from the pillowcase concept to wrapping pedestals from wrapping pedestals to positioning on walls from walls to floors. Um, certainly not full coverage on all of those, or it might just be a little too much of a good thing, but, um, but it really grew in terms of its scope and size. So as this project grew, um, it, 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 it changed in so many ways. Um, at the beginning, the challenge was how, how much do we print in order to create the right depths and textures? And I think as you'll see, if you kind of look through the videos uh, and, the, and the stills that are that are um, being captured on the YouTube channel, you'll see a difference between when we print something in a uh, five pass versus a 10 times through press versus 15 versus 20 versus 25. Um, you can literally see the difference of the, of the embossment techniques and the debossment techniques and the texturized printing. Uh, in the same token, what we experienced was as you lay down the color scheme, depending on how much you lay down, it actually changes the color. So if you're trying to attain a certain specific color, uh, it has to be adjusted. It, there's not a one size fits all. And I liken this to the whole concept of, of, you know, I guess so many things in this world of art and science. Printing has, because of technology, has gotten so much more scientific. Um, our, our throughputs are much more calculated. We know what we're going to get by day. We know how many beds should we, we should get through an hour off press. All that very scientific, very quantifiable and mathematic. However, when you get into this, it's really cool because it brings in this massive element of art overriding the science. Certainly, the technology necessary in order to create the art, but the art is what then generates um, and, and manifests the science into something that's really unto itself. So if there's a specific color you're trying to teach, achieve, what we found out is if we lay down uh, ink five times and we try to hit the same PMS color in 15 times of printing or 20 times of printing through press, uh, there's a shift. And so we just simply have to gauge and calculate slightly different, different for those particular processes. And you wouldn't ever really think this would come into play because people would either choose to produce uh, one way or the other. But when you go from 
making a little of something like pillowcases to a lot of something like walls, uh, budget becomes an issue. And so it was one of those things of, okay, how can we continue to keep this texturized look without blowing a year's worth of budget um, in, in achieving the process. And so as we flexed out of and created variable passes through press, which created, uh, w w in order to create savings and some economies, that's when we started to notice slight differentials in the color hues. So then that had to be calculated into account. And in the end, you could have very similar looks and feels not identical certainly but similar in different print processes throughout an entire environment that all incorporated texture but based on volume and based on i guess impact value the client could pick and choose how much texture to put down given the the cost benefits um, from a finance standpoint so it was one of those great testimonials, and we ended up making tons of samples of 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 pass of this one particular uh, art pattern, because now when clients call in, we can send them this like little test kit, if you will, and I encourage anybody listening who wants to, to go ahead and just shoot an email over to paulm at graphicsystems.com. That's graphic singular systems, plural.com, because it's pretty cool to see. And it really starts to help wrap your head around the fact that the art is probably not that easy to quote or financially understand until you get to a point where you know what you want. So I think what we were running into early in the game in texturized print is people would say, well, how much does it cost? Of course. You want to know how much it costs, and we want to know how much it costs, too, in order to see if it's attainable. And we would always create these large budget ranges um, because we don't know. And now what I think by these little sample packets going out is they help to visually clarify what a difference a couple of passes through press can both make on the texturized front. And then theoretically, in somebody's mind, you know, if it's going to spend... 15 passes through press versus five, what that's going to do, you know, that's just going to be three times as expensive of print process. Um, the cool thing is that I would say it's still affordable. So considering the rollout that I just mentioned, for instance, um, most of those items moved forward with some form of texturization to them. So it's not like it went from being a you know low end entry model to the highest end and there's nothing in the middle that's the cool part about trying to figure out okay how can we make that happen and you need a partner in that process so i i believe graphic systems just by nature such wonderful fabulous people such great industry experts constantly striving to help you achieve your goals whether they be on the art sense the finance sense, or what is most often the case, the art and finance sense. So um, great example and uh, a great learning tool that we're happy to share with anybody as, that's interested in possibly bringing this into their, their, their retail marketing repertoire, this technique. Um, clients continue to reach out out of nowhere yesterday. Super cool company out of Texas that I certainly – um, wanted to do business with for a really long time, uh, hit us up randomly off of our website because they had, they had known that this was something we specialize in. And, um, so it just, it, it continues to create wonderful, neat innovations and opportunities, which we feel very blessed to be able to tackle with these clients hand in hand. This is not something that you can spec out. Um, it, it is a consultative process, but of course we are happy to make ourselves available to those potential clients or current customers in order to achieve it. So many thanks for your time and your attention. And we hope you have a great day. Take care.